Hi, I'm Lawrence Edison from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the gas vat, Mark II. So, if you saw the first video, you saw that there are a number of issues that I didn't like with the gas vat. I spoke to the manufacturers, I fed back this information, and amazingly, they've sent me a brand new Mark II version of the gas vat, along with the updated propane burner for me to review and take a look at. And I have to say, they have solved all of my issues with this second iteration model. Um, so the purpose of this video is we're gonna go back, have a look at the things that I didn't like in the first video, compare them to what I found they've resolved with the new Mark II model, um, and then give my recommendations for the product going forward. So the first version of the gas fat, the reason I didn't like it, wasn't necessarily to do with this end. This was a really good design. It was the propane burner, was incredibly unreliable I found. Um, now, if you've got one or two hives, as I said in the previous video, the propane burner would have probably worked well, but for, for bee farmers and people who have got kind of 10, 15, 100, 1,000 hives, when you're going along doing treatment after treatment after treatment, the burners, uh, propane burners failed, and it's generally the, the ignition that failed. I just think it was too hot and um, the ignition failed and you just couldn't get it back going again. So I reverted to my sublimox because I found that a lot more reliable. Um, the other issue I had was that it was getting a little bit hot around here, but like I said, if they resolve the issue with the propane burner, that was a bit of a minor issue and, and just a small gripe, and it's kind of almost like icing on the cake for me, something. I didn't like the burner, and then there was a little other issue as well that was a bit niggly. So I've got over that now. Um, another key feature that they've added actually in the second iteration of the actual gas fab is this here. So they've added a screw thumb turn there, which means that this feels a lot more solid now. It doesn't fall off, whereas before it was a push fit and it could fall off. You've actually got the ability to kind of screw that on now, which means that if you've got your own kind of high quality propane burner, it will fit a, a number of different models. Um, so the first thing I have to say is thanks so much to the team at GasFat for kind of A, giving me the opportunity to review the new model, but B, taking on constructive criticism from a, a number of people and I know they've had a lot of feedback about the quality of the existing uh, first generation torch and and the first thing they did is they went out and they sourced a, a, a much more reliable substitute so thank you thank you for taking on the constructive criticism um, a lot of manufacturers kind of say well that's the product it's got its flaws just kind of deal with it but for some uh, for a manufacturer to be so reactive to people's criticisms and feedback and to kind of go away look how they can put that right and then come out with an iteration that solves all of the problems of the previous generation kind of hats off to the team down at GasFat for doing that so quickly and getting the new model out so we've summarized kind of the issues that i didn't like with the first one got a little bit hot but i could get over it but mainly it was a propane torch it was unreliable and i didn't like it and the team at GasFat have completely resolved that with the new model so it's a rec row burner now and it gives you a really really minute control over the temperature of the flame and I think that's important because what you didn't want before you didn't want it running at max heat because that caused issues with the reliability so you tried to kind of put the temperature down to as low as it possibly could on the previous one and it went out so in order to kind of get it working you had to have it at a high temperature which meant that it probably failed earlier than it should now this new model and I'll just take the gas fat element off this new model, it has a really kind of fine ability to control the flame. But more importantly than that, is that it doesn't go out when you turn the flame right down. So the way that you turn it, uh, that you work this one, is you turn the propane on first, like that. And then you turn the torch on. And as you can see, you've got a very steady torch there. Um, it's, it's very windy here today, hence the, the flame going a bit all over the place. But then what you can do is you can turn that right down. So you can turn that right down now, and that doesn't go out. Um, so I've done a few tests with this. I've had it going. I've had 20 gas faps in a row off a single burner. Um, the propane tank will last a lot longer than that. It probably lasts about half an hour. Um, and the, the torch didn't go out once. And I can safely say that never happened on the previous one. I never got past kind of six or seven vapes on the other one. So I've run this one, done loads of tests on it, and it really, really is a very, very good torch. Um, so yeah, so, so they've completely resolved the problem with the torch which is really great, we will just turn that off. Not only have they resolved the issue with the torch, but they've obviously added the new functionality on there for put this, scrum, uh, this screw thumb turn on. Let's get a close up on that. 
you can see now you have the ability to kind of use any other burner you want in there that's going to kind of fit on that diameter but i have to say i wouldn't bother i'd use the burner that they've given you because that is a real real top quality burner um you can just tell from my kind of uh, initial weekend's use on it that it's going to be very very reliable uh, now i understand there's a further development in the pipeline as well so the team down at gas are resolving another issue as well and that is the temperature caused around the caps here so you can see the caps are made of copper and when you put that into the gas vat like that and you invert it. I mean, obviously you've got to kind of hold that. And I know a number of people use pliers, um, but what they're looking at is potentially kind of covering that with a heat resistant silicon, which would mean that you can do it just kind of in like, you, you wouldn't use bare hands because you want to use the kind of correct PPE, um, but just do it with kind of normal either latex gloves or something that won't melt instead of having to use welders gloves like this. So that's a, like a real um, nice innovation, something to look forward to in the future. So we're going to go and have a look. I'll do a bit of a demo. Um, I've run about 20 or 30 shots kind of through the gas vap already. The torch didn't go out once. It's still firing out kind of nice amount of oxalic sublimate. Obviously, whenever you're using any oxalic acid product, we're using apibioxal today, but any kind of generic product, please make sure you use the correct PPE. Full face protection, organic acid vapor filters, gloves, no kind of exposed skin. You want to be uh, as, uh, as safe as you possibly can mitigate the risk of that kind of coming into contact with your skin, your eyes, and obviously most importantly, your lungs. You don't want to breathe any of that vapor in, so just make sure you're using the correct filters and the correct PPE. Um, it's really not a nice product, so you do need to be safe. So we'll go away and we'll take a look at kind of the, uh, the gas fap and the new propane torch in action. So as you can see, it's a really, really significant improvement over the existing gas vat. Um, so much so that I'm gonna run this on all of my treatments this year. I'm gonna give it a kind of full go on 150 colonies. Um, and when I do my 150 colonies, you know what I mean? I do it, do it over 15 days with a five day gap in between. So I treat, leave it five days, treat, leave it five days, treat, leave it five days. And then that way it, it makes sure that I get all of the kind of heretic mics and all of the mites that would have been included within the cat brood on the first two treatments. So as I said before, you're never gonna get all of the mites, but you wanna kind of get as many of them as you possibly can. And three treatments over 15 days with five day intervals is kind of like the recognized method, method for doing that. So what I'll be doing is I'll be doing that on my 150 colonies, including the nukes, and I'll be doing that over uh, three treatments over 15 days. So I'm gonna chuck a uh, 450 treatments through that gas vat and through that torch. And I'll feed back and kind of tell you how many goes you get out on a single torch. Um, and more importantly, the kind of reliability. Will I get all the way through the 150 hives um, without the torch failing? I'm very, very confident we will. The initial testing is incredibly positive. Um, so much so, like I say, I'm gonna use it in all my treatments this year. So I'll feed that back to you and give you kind of a, a further update but my initial findings on this kind of weekend of playing around with it is, is incredibly positive. They've resolved all of the issues that, that kind of I've, I've fed back as a, a constructive criticism. They've given me the option to, they've given me the opportunity to test that again. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. So thanks so much to the team at GasVap for kind of giving me the opportunity to test out the new and updated model. And that's about it. So again, very short video, just a bit of an update and Something I just kind of want to say in terms of my reviews and the manufacturers is that I'll always give the products a second chance. If I'm ever kind of saying something in particular that I don't like about a product, I'm always happy to kind of go and speak to the manufacturer about that, um, give that feedback back to them from someone who's kind of, do you know what I mean, almost semi-professional, someone who's gonna have the experience of kind of like a few more hives than maybe one or two in the back garden. Um, and let them take that away, go through design development and come up with a solution that kind of resolves the issues. And that's not to say um, the issues that I'm finding are, are nitpicking. Do you know what I mean? I'll only kind of bring them up if they're real fundamental flaws with the product. Like for example, the Swienti Brood Box, there's loads of issues with it, 
and we've gone through that in the Swenty brood box review and I wish Swenty would go away and resolve that product but I can still kind of manage with it you know what I mean you've seen I paint loads of their boxes all the time um, and I buy them because they're cheap so it's not me nitpicking it's not me kind of finding flaw with products just for the sake of it just for the purpose of the reviews when I pick up these major flaws that is it's because they're major flaws it's not because I'm nitpicking um, but like I say, I'm always happy to go back, speak to the manufacturer and then kind of get that product back in the revised Mark II product and give it an updated review and see if it can kind of resolve the issues that I found in the previous review. Um, so that's it. So thanks for watching the video again. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of every single video that we post onto YouTube. Closer and closer into the season now, the colony's really kind of getting a, li a little bit more active. I suspect that there's a bit of brood in some of them going forward now. Um, we just need to make sure that all these storms kind of get out of the way. We don't lose any more colonies. And then that's it. We're straight into the season. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.